Well, first of all, it's very difficult to find a single sentence answer. They're not being killed. Uh, I've, I've watched this stuff for what it's worth, me being the witness uh, from the days back in the 1950s. I'm an ancient old bastard. Uh, when Joey Smallwood was a fairly, in many ways, a fairly tyrannical premier at the end of his days. And I thought I learned then as a teenager what overreach was like and what even in a minuscule circumstance like Newfoundland, it's it's not Russia or the United States, but nonetheless, when you get in charge, how you over time you attenuate or you lose or you diminish the few noble impulses that you may have come in with and become completely obsessed with yourself. To go right to your question, however, it really is very difficult that after two years and very sporadically effective measures don't take the mask, they'll hurt you. Play, take the mask, ignoring the old age homes, the economic ruin that's going on. And after we go through two whole years of this, this third variant, you mentioned the Omicron comes in, the information comes by, and as you point out, major and responsible countries, after the two years, realizing that, okay, we're into a milder circumstance, we cannot continue claustrophobically to restrict our citizens from their basic rights, they start to lift them serious countries start to lift the mandates. And so at the tail, and also, as you mentioned, uh, some of the provinces in Canada. And at this point, a single group, the trucks, who for two years were going around uh, delivering food and being regarded as heroes, they, they live, as people have pointed out, solitary lives. They, they're alone in their trucks. But after two years, at the very, very end, a core of those truckers, and it could be from principles of civil liberties. It could be because they believe that they've already had COVID and therefore they have immune. In other words, there's a whole host of rational reasons that some people would say, no, I, I have occupation and it's two years and all these things are going away. And instead, they're threatened. Their livelihoods are threatened. Their actual livelihoods. And then they, they I got to get this in. They, they they make this point. They say to Ottawa, they say to their own politicians, why are you doing this? You know, we have worked like others have not worked. We have worked as hard as the medical staff. We have worked as hard as the grocery clerks. And we are the people bringing you the food and, by the way, the supplies for the hospitals. So of all the people to single out, the, the the working class trucker, and then they go across Canada in the middle of you know the winter. There's a week's warning, and here's the key: at no point, at no point, did any substantial authority, backbencher, minister, minister of finance, or prime minister send out either a delegation or himself and say, "Look, these are these guys and gals in these trucks." are the heart and soul of this country. Come in and let's have a chat. We're Canadians. We talk about things. We, we, have, we have prided ourselves ever so much that we're so polite and we're so compromising. We say sorry when someone else hits us. So where, where did the ethic, the intrinsic ethic of the Canadian temperament disappear? And instead, instead of saying, oh, my God, what a, what a joy it would be to talk to someone who's at, not in cabinet, to talk to someone who does a job, who has kept society functioning. If you guys have problems, I really want to speak to you because I'm your prime minister and I'm also the prime minister of Canada. But no talk, none at all. And instead, this is the thing that really got my temper up. Instead, out of the blue, like, like some dark wizard, he comes down on them. They're racists. They're yeah. misogynists. They're only a small fringe, but they're taking up space, and we can't tolerate that. I, I do not know. I really do not. I do not know what was in his mind, what was in the minds of his superlative advisors, presuming that they have them. And I'm also surprised that the Liberal caucus, Liberal is a, is a word without a capital letter many, many times. How come all those backbenchers, some of them from the Atlantic provinces, who know the working class, who know fishermen, and fishermen and loggers and miners and oil workers and truckers, they're a class. Does no one stand up for them and instead let the prime minister rail at them? 
And Mr. Singh saying that these are white supremacists and they're calling Islam a disease. Whenever I hear the word irresponsible tossed at the Ottawa protest, it, it turns me upside down. One more final point, I'll shut up. When have you seen, when in America or in Canada, a two and a half week protest by BLM or Antifa or some environmental group and not a window smashed, not a police officer attacked, no burning of buildings, no shouting curse words at the police forces, no intimidation. This has been a classic, a classic Canadian protest in this sense that A, it's a working class protest, so it's not professional. And secondly, considering what's at stake, livelihood, restriction of civil liberties, an and an inflammatory rhetoric from the prime minister, the fact that the last two weeks have been as tranquil as they have, that, that's, that's a new bloom in the idea of Canadian temperament. Sorry to be so long.